Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the fans just haven't asked for it, they have demanded it. This August, we're headed back to Tampa for Russell House 2. WrestleMania weekend, we brought you Sinister Minister James Mitchell, TJP, Demolition Smash, Al Snow, Dutch Mantel Zeb Coulter, JTG of Crime Time, and WWE Hall of Famer Gerald Briscoe for in-depth interviews and live interactive cyber autograph signings. And if you want our Wednesday Night Wrestling Insider Special edition episodes to continue, we need your help to bring these superstars careers and lives to life. Bringing you free content seven days each week is an expensive proposition between appearance fees, air travel, renting the house, the equipment and everything that goes in to a week of shooting. We can't do it without you. As we prepare to return to producing live and ring events, help us bring you the superstars and legends of yesterday and tomorrow by visiting Indiegogo now and check out some of the great rewards. Wrestling fans, it's going to be a wild week in Tampa the first week in August. Get ready for Wrestle House 2. Right down in beautiful Tampa, Florida. Tremendous college football career. Tell us what got you from the gridiron into the squared circle. Well, I was drafted by the New Orleans Saints and when I played ball. And uh, I was up there for two or three years. Uh, it's been so long ago I forgot. And uh, I... Uh, I was watching wrestling on TV and I said, I could do that. So I had my father-in-law, he talked to uh, a bank president and then the bank president knew Eddie Graham and one thing led to another, Eddie Graham knew who I was through my football. And uh, he said, well, he can come down and try out. So uh, I went down to the uh, sports, uh, what was it, sports? Uh, uh, sportatorium. Sportatorium. No, that was in Dallas. <laughs> well, that's close enough. The Army? Anyway, no, no, no. This is in Florida, right. Tampa. I know where you're talking and, about. And uh, it's a sport. I don't forgot it. But anyway, it was a small building, and um, Hiro Masuda was there, and uh, Eddie Graham, uh, a couple of other promoters were there as well, and uh, Bob Backlund was there, uh, uh, Bob Roop. Anyway, I had to wrestle all four, there was four of them all together. And I had to wrestle all four of them for about 10 minutes apiece. And then by the time I got through with the fourth one, then Hiro Masuda got a hold of me. And uh, Bob knows all about this because he, he was down there. And uh, Tampa used to be, if you were going to break in somewhere, Tampa was the place that you probably didn't want to go because <laughs> most people didn't make it. It matter, was torturous. I, matter of fact, I'd say 98% of the people didn't make it. A lot of people have compared Matt Suda's form of training to almost torture. Oh, it was. And uh, I did it for about uh, seven or eight months. And every day after uh, one, one of the sessions, he'd say, come back. So I'd go back the next day. And this went on for, like I said, six, seven months. And uh, I, uh, I was taught so much and and and. Uh, it wasn't nothing about uh, professional wrestling, really. They never showed me anything about it. Right. <laughs> All we did was do 10,000 Hindu squats a day and, and run with somebody on your back. And what they tried to do is to break you. That was the whole motive behind it was to break you. And uh, I wasn't going to be broken. And, and I went through you know what for six to seven, eight months. And uh, for anybody to break in down there, they know, what, they know exactly what I'm talking because you just didn't walk off the street and think you were going to be a professional wrestler. They made me pay the price, and I paid the price. And uh, I had the respect for it, which uh, you don't see that anymore. I used to have so much respect, and I still do. Um, I'm sad to say what I see going on in it nowadays is not, it's not what I consider the the true art of wrestling. There's an art to it. And there's psychology to it. And uh, it takes years to do that. You can't train a guy or have somebody to go jump off the top of the ropes. I can train any monkey to do that. It's right. Two weeks. You know, but the art of making people not like you, the art of that 
or the art of, of them to make them like you. There's an art to it. And uh, my, I like to part about people not liking me. And uh, because I could back it up. Yeah. It's that simple. You know, and uh, I was an All-American in high school and in college. Uh, I've done everything you can do. And I paid the price for every bit of it. And I paid the price for wrestling. And that's why to this day I love it. I love the actual sport. And I still call it a sport. Absolutely. You it know, sport. You, yeah. you call it entertainment. Vince McMahon, he can take that and you know what he can do with it. It's not, you know, the true art of it. Now, what he does is call it what you want. But the guys in the first WrestleMania in the 80s was as hot as it ever was or ever will be. I mean, look at us. Here we are, 80 and 90 years old, and look the way we look. And we're still here. And you know something? The people, you know, you know what's amazing is that I go through the airports and different places like that. People still recognize us. And I don't even be on, I'm not on TV anymore. You know, and people all the talk about that first WrestleMania and, and, and just the whole concept of it and, uh, and what it did for wrestling because the 80s really did because they had, there was so much talent. You had guys like Bob Orton here. Bob, uh, uh, his daddy, uh, I remember talking to him, you know, and Bob was a big name in Florida. And to be a big name in Florida, <laughs> you had to be something because yeah. it was known for the, you know, that's, they didn't take lilies in there. You right. had, you know, you had to prove yourself. And I, I'll repeat that again because I've seen guys come in there and you could ask Hawk Hogan this, ask Terry this. They broke his ankle or did something to him. I forget what it was, but it was during the time that we were training. They sent him to the hospital. You know, they, it wasn't no, <laughs> it ain't nothing like what it is. And it took a man to stick with it. And it, I, I mean it because they didn't want you to. There was more protection of the business back then. Protection? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there was, was a greater emphasis. It went farther than that there. And there was a more of an emphasis to try and get the legit athletes out of the colleges and the high schools That's right. in there with size yeah. and, you know, that could really back it up. That That's had their right. name out there, especially in the days of the territories That's when the names right. were locally known. And, and you know, too, that uh, Bill Watts, uh, I ended up going to Bill Watts, and Bill had the same mental concept as Eddie Graham did. I mean, he was the same way. And, uh, you know, somebody wanted to try to, you know, they he'd always send somebody and say, yeah, we'll let you try out. And, uh, many times I've gone down to the ring down there and, and uh, did to those people what I had done to me. <laughs> when I, when I, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I played football. And I'm, I'm not sitting up here and tell you, but I... I played as high as you can get to playing football. I was a fullback, and I loved to hit people. I loved it. I lived for it. And you wonder, well, well what make you do that? Well, I wasn't wrapped too tight. I'll be honest with you. Anybody that likes to go out and get the heck knocked out of them or hit somebody, something ain't right. Well, that's true. And that's why I love this sport so much is because of what I paid and the dues I paid and, uh, and had to respect that I have for it. And buddy, I don't, you know, it's just a whole different ball game now. It's a different world nowadays it's for totally better or worse. Different. And, uh, and the sad part of it, I hear it every day at the gym, I'll, almost every day practically, somebody, somewhere. I used to watch it, but we don't watch it no more. We quit watching it back when, you know, and they had, and they said different names, Bob and she, just every, you know, all in that whole crew back then. I mean, I looked up to this guy and, uh, when he was, you know, in Florida and uh, stole some of his material, and that's what I did. I'd, I'd watch certain people. I watched every dead gum match because I was told, watch the matches. And then I would take what I saw somebody do, and I'd think, well, I'd like to use that in me because that's me. That's my style. And I did that. And I watched different people, the Dick Slaters and the, the Bob Ortons and just different people, Steve Kearns and people like that. And I'd put it all in my menu. And then, you know, after two or three, four years, and then you finally get 
an idea of what's going on, and then I, you know, I blossomed out. I, mm -hmm. I started making up stuff and doing stuff, and it worked. Thank you for joining us. Please give the video a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel to enjoy more great content. Don't forget, you can help keep wrestling legends working. Check out our eBay store and join the Boston Wrestling family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling so we can produce more in-depth shoot interviews.